Good morning, friends. My name is Eric. I'm our Ottawa lead pastor, and I help serve on our pastoral leadership team. And it's good to be together for church today here online at the Meeting House. And excited for what we have today. It's the first Sunday of summer. It's the last week of school. The sun is shining. And yeah, it's just a great time and ex to step into a new season. Uh, we're moving from spring, but now we move into the season of summer. And summer always feels like a time of celebration for me. And so glad that you're here together with us today. And I would love for you to put in the chat, whether you're in Discord or watching on YouTube, what are some of your favorite summer activities? What do you love to do? What do you love about summer? Are you going camping? Are you going to the cottage? Do you love to just take a walk? Do you work on your suntan? Like what, what is it that you love to do in the summer? I would love to hear from you. For me, I'm looking forward to, in a couple of weeks, I'm going on vacation with my family. We're gonna go hang out. We've got a trailer um, on Manitoulin Island with uh, my wife's family. And we're gonna be spending some time together with family and relaxing and we're looking forward to that and I would love to hear what you're looking forward to this summer. Um, so use the chat, uh, find us on Discord, find, chat on YouTube and we love to continue the conversation there and hear from you so give it a shout out. Uh, before we move into a great time of musical worship and some teaching, just want to let you know that if you uh, love to be a part of this community, um, that this community is put together by people who give of themselves, who are generous, and who uh, give their money to support um, the work that we do here at the Meeting House, things like the live stream, things like our Compassion Ministries, things like the multiple locations that we have across Ontario, and the ways that those churches are helping disciple people in the way of Jesus and creating loving communities in spaces like Ottawa where I'm from, or Hamilton, or Oakville, or Toronto, and all these different locations. And so if you'd love to be a part of what we're doing, because we can't do this without each one of us um, helping to, to lean in support. That's what community is about, is actually supporting and caring for each other. And so if you want to go to meetinghouse.com slash give, uh, you can go there and you can help be a part of what it is that we're doing. And I, uh, me and my family, we contribute uh, every month to what the Meeting House is doing. And we'd love for you to join us. Um, there's some really, really good stuff happening here in this community, and we'd love for you to be a part of it. Um, each one of us, different times in our community, have to make that move from just being somebody who's just observing to somebody who's like, yeah, I want to be invested in this. Uh, when we invest in something, uh, our, when we invest with our money, our hearts come along with it. And so I would invite you to do that too. Um, so just that's just a little way that we can move from just being like, oh, this is a thing that I watch to actually like, this is a thing that I'm a part of. This is a community that I belong to, whether it's just taking part in the chat or actually like being a part of this community um, by supporting it financially and with your generosity. That's a great way that you can take part too. So join us in that, join us in the chat, join us in giving. And we're looking forward to the time that we have together today. We've got musical worship and I'm real excited for the teaching this week. Um, it's with Jay Jenny, and Jenny is actually my co-pastor um, in Ottawa, and she's talking this week, um, we're on this series about walking through wisdom, and she's talking about Proverbs 31. And if you're part of church world at all, you know that Proverbs 31, now that's, that's the passage that's all about a biblical woman. And you may have heard some teaching on this before and say like, oh, that, that passage, that may have been misused or I've uh, been used to put pressure on people, particularly women. And so I would encourage you to be like, okay, I might have some reservations, but hang out for this one because I think Jenny has some really good and thoughtful things to offer. And it's probably not quite the perspective that you might be expecting. And so I'm really looking forward to hearing what she has to say. And I think you will get a lot from it too as we think about what it means to be people of wisdom. Let me pray for us before we go into a time of worship. Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you that it is a new season. It is summer, and we uh, there are so many things to enjoy in this season. Thank you that we can be part of this community. Uh, and we thank you that you invite us to be people of wisdom and help us to have our hearts open to, to understand what it is to be people of wisdom, to live a wise life. Um, that, that seems, that sounds so rich to me and seems like something that I would want to aspire to. And so I pray that you would help us to learn about that, um, and enjoy this time as we worship and learn together as community in Jesus name. Amen. Does it matter? 
yes, the Proverbs 31 woman, the holy grail of biblical femininity. She is the Wonder Woman of Scripture, the unstoppable female juggernaut who conquers life with little or no difficulty. No woman has inspired more books, ministries, blogs, conferences, devotionals, mugs, feelings of guilt, and self-loathing than her. Stephen Altrogi. While there are references to tasks that have been traditionally gendered, women cook and sew, men take leadership roles outside the home. Many of the qualities extolled here are commendable for adults of all genders. Strength, dignity, wisdom, and care are not gender-specific virtues. So why haven't I heard this proverb set as an example for men too? Dr. Elise M. Edwards. Wisdom calls out from these places and invites humans to follow her into these places, conducting themselves with integrity in every realm in devotion to God. Dr. David Beldman. At the end of the book, the valiant woman perfectly depicts what Proverbs aims to accomplish with its nearly 1,000 sayings. People who are so trained in wisdom that they know the good, love the good, choose the good, and act upon the good. Dr. Ryan O'Dowd. The woman to be admired and praised is the woman who lives in the fear of God. Give her everything she deserves. Adorn her life with praises. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 31. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. James chapter 3, verse 13. Well, greetings, welcome. It's lovely to see all of your faces and to meet you. The infamous BFG online, others watching on screens or phones or tablets or new technology in the future, we don't know. Welcome. Um, I wanna start with a small story. A few years ago, I was in a home church setting and there are a couple of kids, they are siblings and I overheard them talking to each other. One of my favorite things, listening to children when they don't think they're being listened to. And the older sister, was telling the younger brother, of course, bossing. I am also an older sister, I relate. She was saying, I think they were six and four. When I say yummy, you say cheese. Yummy, cheese, yummy, cheese. And I thought, amen, sister, I'm with you. <laughs> um, but I also, I'm somebody who studied linguistics. I find language fascinating. Um, that little kind of ditty, you can put any two syllable word, any one syllable word. Like if I say home church, you say yay. Home church. Yay. Home church. Yay. The second one was better. <laughs> um, I just find that really fascinating. And so let's find out what happens when I say Proverbs 31. You say. Yay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yay. Yay. Um, as I have talked to people about this, they say, oh, hey, you're doing some talking. What are you going to talk about? And I say Proverbs 31. And people say, oh, oh. Because what I've noticed um, and experienced myself, for those that don't know, Proverbs 31 verses 10 to 31 are a passage describing um, what has sometimes been translated as a virtuous woman or a capable woman, a strong woman. And she does so many things. She provides food for her family. She's an like, entrepreneur. She's wise. She, her husband is esteemed because of her reputation. She, they just list upon list, verse upon verse of amazing things that she does. And for some people, this has been um, applied like a checklist. And by some people, I mean specifically women, specifically wives. And so for some people, this passage can feel heavy hearted. They feel like, oh, this passage reminds me I'm not enough. Um, and some people find it exciting, maybe aspirational, and there's joy and goodness in that, and more on that later. Some people skip over it. They think, oh, this is describing a woman. I don't identify as that. So let's, let's hit the next passage. Ecclesiastes 1, here we come. That's Daryl next week. But um, so I, I was invited to, to be part of this series, and then this passage specifically. And at first I was apprehensive because... I needed to do some learning. So as I have dug in, this has turned into 
um, a much more life-giving passage than I ever expected. So allow me to share my new fresh enthusiasm uh, for Proverbs 31 with you. First and foremost, it's not literal. There are, there are so many things listed in it, like making clothing from hands, wearing silks and the color purple. And I think it's one of those passages where it's, if you make it literal, you're automatically going to fail. Nobody wore purple today, I noticed. So we're all, we're all missing the mark on Proverbs 31 as an aspirational passage. We all got a lot of light blue. So we're like, you know, there's room for grace, but that's not really what this is about. But what it is about is it's meant to be very memorable. And what clues point to that is that it's a poem. It's at the very end of Proverbs and the poem is an acrostic. So it's 22 verses long, um, acrostic, it's an alphabetic acrostic poem. So every verse starts with a particular letter and they're in the order of the Hebrew alphabet. The translation to English is obviously a fail because we have 26 letters, that's already a mismatch and the words don't necessarily translate with the same starting letters in a different alphabet, lots of challenge there, but we do know it's an acrostic. And so we know that it was meant to be easy to remember, meant to be top of mind. Um, it's also exemplary. There are a lot of surface things like providing food for her children, um, nourishment for her household, um, considering fields and buying them that are good things. And if you do those things, wonderful and good, uh, if you're considering a field and buying it, planting a vineyard, we're near Niagara, you might. Um, but if you don't literally do those things, you're not falling short. But how do we know how we measure in our spaces, in our lives, how to map that Proverbs 31 vibe, to shout out to people younger than me, um, in our own lives. And so I'm, I'm describing it as exemplary because it is an example and because it is the best example the Proverbs 31 woman is the culmination embodied of all of the wisdom of Proverbs. And I think that helps to make it more memorable as well, because instead of a list of two line sayings and two line sayings and just piles and piles of them as beautiful and good as they are, I find that much harder to memorize than a description of a character, somebody that I can relate to because I'm a person and I provide food for my family here and there almost every day, <laughs> every day. Um, I consider financial things and try to steward what I have. I don't plant grapes, but I planted, you know, some herbs and some flowers and my husband plants a ton of tomatoes and hot peppers, that's his thing. Um, so it's meant to be something that we can look below the surface and find the deeper meaning and then map that onto our own lives. So as I was trying to figure out how do I one line describe this whole passage. Um, the phrase that she is the literary personification of God's wisdom came to mind. She is rooted in the fear of the Lord, as Quincy was talking about last week with so much, all of the Proverbs talk about wisdom being rooted in the fear of the Lord. And so she is personifying that wisdom, starting by being rooted in the Lord. And then her wisdom also, as you mentioned last week, Quincy, isn't just holding it all in her head and her heart, knowing it, but she lives it out. So many of the lines about her are actions that she does outwardly. They're not sitting quietly and contemplating, although she also teaches and gives up her wisdom, which again is outward. Um, and that reminds me that when we are looking to her as an example, what in our life is that embodied wisdom that is moving outside of ourselves, not just being held close to our own benefit or comfort. And then another factor that I found inspiring and interesting is that her, as you read through, she's clearly the central character of this poem, but um, almost all of her actions directly affect another community member in her community. So she, it's mention of children, of servants, of the poor and the needy, her husband. And what that said to me is that she is very um, relatable. She's an everyday person. She has people in her lives. We all could look around and think who are the closest people in our lives. Those are who we should apply wisdom and love and action to first, and then keep extending as you have opportunity. Um, she's a very memorable example for us, as I mentioned, because she's not just a list of do this, do that. Although 
if there are memorable lists, I would say the fruits of the spirit are pretty up there. That's a very memorable list. But she is a person that we can picture. She loves God. She soaks up wisdom. And then she uses that wisdom in loving her neighbors. So then I thought, who else, who else is an example of this kind of godly wisdom? Any guesses? Jesus. <laughs> you could have done it. Yeah, I know. When in doubt, just yell Jesus. It works in most church settings, not all settings, most church settings. Um, and then it struck me that perhaps Jesus, she, the Proverbs 31 woman is the literary personification of God's wisdom. Jesus is the literal personification of God's wisdom. He came down to earth filled. He is God's wisdom and spent time living on earth with us. And like the Proverbs 31 woman, he's rooted in God's wisdom and his love is action. It's oriented outward to other people for their benefit to love God. And again, that same kind of everyday incarnational way of being gives us this model to look at and to aspire to and to hold on to versus a list of do's and don'ts. I mean, we walked through Leviticus recently. There are so many, God, God offered the opportunity of like lists and exactness and there was a place and a time and a purpose. But I think our Anabaptist roots just light up when we see this simplicity in action, the simplicity of Jesus coming to earth, living incarnationally and being the example, being the thing to model our own actions after rather than having to kind of like remember the guidebook. Oh, in this situation, like section B dash under sub part something, I don't do legal work. So I don't know how they say these things, but um, so we've got the literary personification of God's wisdom in the old Testament. Love a good lady hero in the Bible. Um, we have the literal personification of God's wisdom in the new Testament. And then I thought, well, what about today? Where's God's wisdom today? And first of all, the two I just said, they're still with us. We've got our Bibles, we've got texts. We can still look at those examples and they can still, of course, we absolutely spend most of our time in this community looking to Jesus as our, as our example. The Proverbs 31 woman comes up sometimes here and there today, but um, Jesus is a steadfast example. The Proverbs 31 woman, there are other examples in the Bible. Um, the Holy Spirit is the one that is our gift, our present everyday gift, where God's wisdom is available to us. And part of our job with that is the Proverbs 31 woman, woman and Jesus, they didn't just, they didn't just casually assume that wisdom would be still. They, they spent time seeking God. They spent time making space for that and gave and were able to give that wisdom outwardly, that love and action outwardly because they had first received it from God. The source of everything we can ever do will always be because God offered us an abundance first. And from that, we can overflow into others. I feel like I'm doing this move a lot. So maybe I'll try and switch it up. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so where's God's wisdom today? I listed Proverbs 31 woman, Jesus, God himself, of course, we could talk to him, the Holy Spirit with us. Um, and each of us experience that in different ways. And I didn't put in the home church questions, but I would love to hear and always love hearing about how people feel and discern and understand the Holy Spirit, because I think that being is so diverse in how they connect with us, um, an ongoing fascination of mine. And also I think each other, I think as we listen to the Holy Spirit and share our learnings and wisdom and gleanings from God with each other, then we also, it's like being a channel for God, being a, a vessel and we can learn about God through each other, through God directly, and we can offer that to each other. So with all of this, what are, what are the pieces that I pray for myself and for our community that we go away with and that we kind of mull over and marinate and apply in our lives? And so the first one is a call. And when I read through Proverbs 31, again, verses 10 to 31, the first nine verses are um, a separate section of wisdom. And because the last 22 verses are an acrostic, some scholars believe they're just their own section. Um, but the first thing is it's a call to wisdom. I know that might sound obvious. <laughs> we're talking about Proverbs. We're talking about wisdom books, but the, the wisdom 
as has been mentioned before as well, is not just knowing something, but living it out. So that call to wisdom is a call to like goodness in action, a call to love being manifested in some tangible and specific way. And James 3.13 references this idea. It says, who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Um, The call to wisdom is not a one-time offer or like a limited deal. It's an ongoing availability. And so as we are called to do that, if we're wondering, oh, I feel like I've applied all I have. I'm running out endless amounts. You can posture yourself like a child before God, as you mentioned Solomon did last week. You can there's so many resources and places, but I just, I, I have great faith and joy that whenever we ask for God, ask of God for wisdom with this intention, because we want to live it out in love for other people, he will just bestow it abundantly and with joy. If my, if my three-year-old, almost three-year-old asks for, you know, more time so that she can help dad with something. I don't know how she can help clean up things. I would just say, take all the time, more, all the time in the world. If you want to do this beautiful act for your, you know, my husband, yes. Amen. And amen to that. So I just picture God being a delighted parent, seeing that other centeredness in our hearts and just wanting to lift that up. The second invitation, um, well, a call, I listed them as a call an invitation and an exhortation, just some variety in words, um, an invitation to variety and discernment. And so what I see here, both in the Proverbs 31 woman and Jesus' life, is wisdom being embodied, being lived out, but it's not exhaustive. And so when we look at especially Proverbs 31, there's 22 verses given. There are only so many things you can describe in a 22 verse acrostic. And so those are the things that are listed and they're relevant to her time in history and her place in society. And as I thought about that, I thought, well, even if we tried to translate this into English and make some sort of 26 letter acrostic, good luck with X, it'll be probably one of the harder ones, but maybe she's an X-ray technician. We don't know. Um, I thought you're like, maybe that's a, maybe that would be a gift to have to brainstorm or come up with four more verses that work and apply more directly to our modern context. And so one of your home church questions is going to be, brainstorm some more verses. What would this woman of wisdom look like in our day and age? Jesus's life, also finite, also of a very specific time in history, a very specific place. And so he lived out this beautiful, loving, perfect life in that setting. And so sometimes I wonder what would that look like in our setting? If he had determined with all of God's wisdom, that now was the time for that story. Imagine 2000 years from now, what would they be looking back at in their gospel of who knows what are the most popular names right now? Um, So I think about the, the gift of that and the irony of needing wisdom to discern how that wisdom will look in our modern day and age. And I also love the gift of variety. It feels like an empowerment to our agency. God gave us, um, community, a brain, uh, each of us has a different life, equally complex, but different. And I think that the gift of being able to say, this is, this is what I know about myself. This is what I have been given so far. This is what I can give. This is a need that I see that maybe somebody else doesn't, um, is very empowering and also endlessly creative and never stagnant because every moment that goes by our lives shift and change and people shift and change around us. And so there's this, there's this beautifully complex, ever changing network of being able to see each other, learning to see ourselves better, learning to see each other better and learning to inject more and more wisdom and love into all of those networks. Let's call them hot word at the meeting house right now. Um, yeah, thank you. One person who laughed. (laughs) I appreciate it. The last, uh, the last, the last sort of theme that I was finding bubbling to the surface in Proverbs 31 was that it is an exhortation to encourage each other. And so the Proverbs 31 woman, these verses were originally written for a man. 
And because they are about a woman, I think they got um, in different places in time and history and our society applied to women. And I think that as I was reading this and doing a lot of research around it, it's actually, it's actually for all of us. This is not just for women. Most of the Bible, somebody said to me, most of the Bible is written for men, but we apply it to everybody. So this one little section, there aren't that many that are specifically about or to women is actually to a man, but about women, but really it's to all of us about people, about a person, about an embodiment, a person embodiment of godliness and his wisdom. And so the other fun thing about it, it's not a checklist. It's not something that you're supposed to use to feel like you don't measure up, or maybe you do, but if you do, that's quite a checklist. If you, that means you've got a loom, you've got a vineyard, you've got a ship sailing afar, gathering it. There's a lot. It would be, please email me. It would be amazing to find out. Um, but it's not a checklist about whether or not you measure up. It's a, it's a, the whole thing is an ode. It's an encouragement. It's a praising of somebody for how wonderful they are and how much they are choosing to receive God's wisdom and live that out for the benefit and delight of their community and those around them. And so one of the um, huddle questions I threw in the mix was celebrate each other, highlight each other's delightful works of wisdom or goodness or love and action. And I know sometimes as Canadians, we're a bit like, we're just a little bit shy sometimes, but I encourage you to be bold. If somebody is doing something amazing, say it, just say it, yell it out. It's such a gift or quietly email it if that's maybe more your style. Um, the last thing I would like to um, just marinate on is as we receive wisdom from God, we respond with our actions. And I think sometimes as our actions are responding to that, it's passing on wisdom to somebody else and then they're receiving it. And then they're responding with their own action. And so I also feel like there's this joy in knowing that we will never see the end of God's goodness. We are holding on to a part of it for a time and then it just goes and goes and goes and goes. And there's, it's like a drop in the sea, but in a more beautiful, not hopeless way. It's like part of something so big and huge that we will never understand. We will never see all of the pieces and parts of, but that we get to choose with our own agency to participate in from a generous God who delights so deeply in offering this to us. So I'll close with saying that the Proverbs 31 lady lives out Jesus's greatest New Testament commandment, which fun fact is actually a hill back to the Old Testament. So she got a heads up about what was happening there, but it's, um, it's listed in a couple places. I always like the Mark 12, 30 and 31, where it talks about love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so all the things that she's doing, she is doing so much of it with her body, which is, which is important. I'm learning about how important my body is in my faith journey, but she is loving God by loving those around her. And I think I, I can't help but very idealistically feel like any community, and I dream this for ours, any community that truly shows their love for God by loving each other as their top priority will be so overabundant in love that it will be so compelling for others to be a part of. It will be so fulfilling for each person involved. And I pray that for us. And I see that example in the Proverbs 31 woman. I absolutely see that example in Jesus. And um, I pray that for all of us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your, your gift of scripture. I, I'm on a journey of feeling like I'm reading some of it with new lenses and I'm so grateful. Um, it is, it's intriguing sometimes it's confusing sometimes, but there's always something that is just so, um, deeply fueling in my soul. And I praise you for that. And I'm grateful for that. And Lord, as we look at the Proverbs 31 woman, and I'll even say person, because it's for all of us, the Proverbs 31 person, Lord, thank you for her, for her example. 
thank you for um, knowing that your people resonate best with seeing another person, seeing an embodiment. And, and you knew that when you sent Jesus, you knew that we would, um, in good and bad ways, respond to that humanity version of you. But also now, Lord, we are so grateful that we understand the depth of your love through your sending of Jesus, even knowing the full story of how that would go. Lord, I pray for all of our, all of our home churches, all of our different sites and communities as we sit in these thoughts for this time. And I just pray your continued steadfastness and guidance and gentleness and patience with us as we do our best um, as a community seeking to not just understand and know about you, but actively, actively, actively live it outwardly. All these, these, all these things in your beautiful name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Jenny, for that teaching. And I think that's a great question for us to be thinking about. What does it mean to live a life that, that a life of wisdom? What does it mean to, to live a life of wisdom as modeled by the woman, the person in Proverbs 31, um, who gives us a literary example of what it means to be a person of wisdom? But I think probably the bigger question for us is, what does it mean to be a person of wisdom who looks like Jesus, who was the literal embodiment of wisdom? And that's always our invitation is, how can we be more like Jesus? And so thank you, Jenny, for, for unpacking that passage for us and helping us to think about, how can I better live out being a person of wisdom? How can I not just think about being a person of wisdom, but how can I actually live that out in my life? It's a great invitation for us to be thinking about and pondering about. And if you've got some thoughts about that, we would love for you to head over to our Discord server and take part in the chat over there and the conversation and maybe share some of your thoughts. And there may be things that you need to unpack about Proverbs 31 and maybe teachings you've heard about that and how this compares to that and, 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 and maybe how this helps you see that passage in a different light. So we'd love to carry on the conversation over on Discord with you. The other place to have a great conversation about what Jenny has just shared is home church. We have online and in person home churches, and we would love for you to join us and take part in the conversation where most of our home churches take a look back at the teaching that we've heard on Sunday and unpack it further. There's discussion questions and conversation where we, we talk about our own lives, but we also talk, talk about the teaching and think about how has what we've heard apply to how we're living today. And that's what this is all about, right? Is we can receive the teaching, we can receive this, these, this information and this story, and then the question is how will we respond? And so how will you respond to what you've heard today? You can talk about that a little bit at Discord, and we'd love for you to join us at Home Church um, to take part in the conversation there. If you've never been part of Home Church before, this is all, there's, there's never a bad time to jump in, and so we'd love for you to come and check that out. All right, and this has been a great time together. As always, if you've got thoughts, if you've got questions, if you've got feedback, we would love to hear from you. Just send us an email at live at themeetinghouse.com and we would love to hear your feedback and hear your thoughts and hear your questions and we'll carry on the conversation that way too. Thanks for hanging out with us. It's been great to be in community together with you here online and we'll see you again next week.